What is the deal with nootropics? Do they work? Which ones should you be taking? How should you be taking it? How do you optimize them? For those who don't know, nootropics are, in most cases, supplements. They can be IVs, they can be drinks, and we even now add in things like technologies that help make the brain work better, gonna have you have clearer cognition, have you more focus, have better memory, all those combined. There are different ways that you can do it. We'll work on all those different facets of the brain. Some will only hit either memory or focus or just kind of be a really quick hit like caffeine. No matter what you're doing in terms of optimizing the brain, you wanna start with the simple stuff. And simple stuff means we three things that you can be doing that are pretty much free to amplify the way your brain is working. First, we know that if you're getting your workout in, you wanna be working out four to five times a week, optimally 30 minutes at a shot. That produces hormones like irisin and BDNF, boosts your testosterone levels and your growth hormone levels to help improve and optimize brain function. Second, you're making sure that you're checking your wearable or ensuring that you're trying to get your normal amount of deep sleep and REM sleep. That is when the brain recovers, that is when memory is developed. So you wanna make sure that those are being optimized. Thirdly, you want to make sure that you are optimizing your hormones, get your labs checked once a year, make sure your testosterone, your sugar levels, your estrogen levels, your insulin are all being are under at, at top levels. We know that patients who don't have normal levels of testosterone, estrogen, thyroid, sugar are going to not, uh, the brain is not gonna work at 100%. You're gonna be working with your gas tank half full and that's not what you wanna be. There's plenty different um, of types of nootropics that are out there. What you wanna figure out first is what are your goals? Are you, is your goal that you just wanna be able to meet a deadline once in a while? Is your goal that you wanna be more creative? Is your goal that you wanna be more focused? We're gonna start um, in terms of the focus component and then we'll go from there and then break things down into a much bigger picture. So understand what the focus, they are not things that you can use all the time. They're not gonna work as well usually. They are things that you do wanna kind of um, pick their, pick their spots for. Everybody knows Adderall or Vyvanse. You can find Adderall right now, there's a little shortage, but the point is those are great to be used more episodically than on a continuous basis if your goal is to really optimize your focus during a specific task. So those medications, the Adderall, Vyvanse, you're gonna take once or twice a day depending on what you're looking for. Other prescription medicine that really can be helpful it's been profiled in a lot of films, it's modafinil. That is something that you wanna be taking only when you need it. Most people will feel brain fog if they use it on a continuous basis. The only time to be using it on a continuous basis would be if you work nights, if you have a very weird sleep schedule, that is what it's mainly intended for, but it's really good for helping focus. It's something with um, called RG3, which is a ginseng derivative. It comes in a nose spray, it's used by golfers and professional race car drivers to really optimize focus. You could start with doing a spray in each nostril once a day. Most patients will notice a pretty good benefit for a pretty good period of time. Other one that that's out there, it's something to be really careful with is nicotine. It's been really popular the last year or two. It's something that you wanna make sure that you're staying low dose, that you're not taking within like two to three milligrams a day of it. If you go any higher or using like a nicotine patch, you can predispose yourself to risk of addiction. Nicotine may help with creativity a little bit, but the rest of them are much better as a focused medication. In terms of memory, that's a totally different basket there. So we're gonna talk about a couple of those things that really help with, with memory. First, you wanna, again, make sure you're optimizing your testosterone. Men and females both need it for memory. We wanna make sure that the levels of acetylcholine are normal. That could be, again, that's what happens in patients with Alzheimer's who have memory issues as well. Make sure that if you have a history of concussion or you have increased stress levels, that we get that down because that is going to affect your memory level. So a couple things that can definitely help memory. Um, one of them is something called methylene blue. It works, again, on acetylcholine and other neurotransmitter pathways. In addition, there are other things that we can use for memory, include some peptides. You can use things like dihexa, which is a cream, works on the angiotensin blood pressure pathway, exogenous ketones, which works on the brain on a lot of different pathways, provides either acetoacetone or beta hydroxybutyrate to the brain, which helps decrease inflammation through a pathway called NLRP3. It also is going to help the mitochondria, so it works on a variety of different ways you want anything you're using in terms of nootropic you want to make sure that it crosses the blood-brain barrier that's a little dividing line between the body and the brain and exogenous ketones do that really well other ways that we work on improving the brain health 
we look at things, they're gonna have the mitochondria. Mitochondria is the ending part of the cell. The brain is one of the biggest areas of mitochondria in the whole body. So we want to optimize the mitochondria and that is why people are using carnitine. You can do it through IVs or injections. It may be a little bit better than just doing it as a supplement, but you can do the supplement as well. We use um, alpha lipoic acid. We're using actually um, melatonin, a supplement like ribose, which provides energy for the mitochondria, and NAD, which is a coenzyme that helps run many of the pathways. We're going to talk about two other peptides. Peptides in this case are going to be our small amino acids. In terms of injections, MOTC has been shown now in studies to help in terms of brain health. It helps decrease inflammation. It may increase bl brain blood flow as well. It also helps the mitochondria. So it is a once a week injection. The other one that's gaining some more and more press called SS31 or Lepertide. It's been used from patients who have no medical history to patients with Alzheimer's. This is also an injection that you're gonna do once a day versus once a week with the MOTC. Their studies are really showing really good improvement. Those are the ones kind of in specific with the mitochondria. We talked about working on focus. We talked about memory, things like NAD, so it's ribose. Uh, you can do magnesium threonine or magnesium glycinate, which helps with sleep and calming. Theanine, uh, two other products that are really good that are coming out, that are out now. One is called Prodrome, which works on plasmalogens, which are the fatty acids in your cell, but there's a, also a component of the brain and the nerves. Most people, as they get past the age of 20, 25, are deficient in. Really good product. It's an oral pill. You can start with two to four pills a day. They're not pills or IVs, but we're gonna talk about some of the technologies that's out there. There are two main technologies that are having more and more data show that they can help with memory and, and, and speed of thought. One is hyperbaric therapy. Hyperbaric therapy is oxygen therapy. You go into this tube that looks like, you put, makes yourself feel like a giant Twinkie. You can either do a soft shell or a hard shell. The hard shells will go for um, higher pressure. You can always start with the soft chamber. You wanna do it up to two to three times a week for about an hour. There are just data coming out every week showing how it, it could improve brain function for again if you're just trying to optimize brain function or if you're trying to deal with some type of brain issue be it Alzheimer's be it Parkinson's disease be it a concussion be it unfortunately post COVID it works really well the other technology that we're looking at that helps brain function is red light therapy red light therapy or you may know it as photobiomodulation increases nitric oxide which is one of the substances that helps dilate the blood vessels which increases blood flow of the brain we also know that it helps provide energy be it infrared or near infrared this can increase nitric oxide if you're going to do it you either want to do a panel or you can actually do some of the units, the red light caps from different brands, or there's now a red light wrap out there that can improve cognitive function. You wanna make sure that you're doing that usually about three times a week, about 10 minutes each time that you do it. Sauna may also help brain function by decreasing inflammation, activating heat shock proteins. It works even better when you do combine it with cold therapy. Cold therapy, which is hot and cold together, are called contrast therapy. What they're doing together is doing a couple different things. They're inducing autophagy. They're also causing hormesis, which is a change that causes an impact on the body, which causes the body to react and improve usually. So you do want, you can do them together or separate. Last thing that we're gonna talk about is three supplements that really don't fit into one specific category but I wanted to highlight them because they have many benefits to them. First one is caffeine. Caffeine, you can take up to two to four grams of caffeine per kilogram per day. You wanna make sure you're trying to finish it up by about 2 p.m., but we know that it helps increase focus and memory, can help boost your immune system. You wanna try, obviously, have to drink that has no sugar in it because that can inhibit it, but caffeine is a really good nootropic. Second one that we're gonna talk about is creatine. Creatine, when you're taking creatine, it does absorb well into the brain. There are numerous studies that show that it's benefits with in terms of memory and cognition. You want to be using creatine monohydrate. You want to be using it uh, five, usually five grams per day. If you are taking it and you are going to be working out that day, you usually can take it just post-workout and that'll achieve all the different functions that you're looking for. Third one that we're talking about and everybody should be on is a supplement in general is omega-3 fish oil. We get a question asked all the time. Like we said, the cell membranes are made of omega-3 fatty acids. You want to make sure that you're getting enough either through diet, through fish, or some other type of uh, supplementation. You want to make sure that you're taking about 3,000 milligrams per day as long as you can tolerate it. You want to do about two to one of DHA to EPA. 
and you also want to make sure that you're getting a product that has no fillers or starches or something that may cause some type of aller allergic reaction or sensitivity to it. So those are three supplements that kind of encompass everything we're looking at. Have a full brain program. You want to make sure that you're doing the lifestyle things. The New York Times crossword puzzle every couple of days. You read a book, engage in an intelligent conversation, listen to an, a stimulating podcast, make the brain work then make sure you're sleeping, make sure you're doing the exercise, making sure that your hormones are maximized. And then you wanna take the general supplements that I mentioned, things like creatine, caffeine, things that, fish oil, vitamin D, magnesium, things that are just really good and healthy. You can pick and choose between all the new cool things that are out there, methylene blue or RG3 or carnitine, the list goes on and on, BPC, dihexa, Ritalin, whatever tends to work for you and everybody's gonna have a different proclivity of what works for them. Just go with it, but work with a doctor who knows how to implement these things. You don't want to be going so high and then crash. You also want to make sure that you're in fixing inherent problem. If you're taking all these supplements and you're not sleeping, you're taking all these supplements and you're not getting appropriate exercise, or your testosterone is in the toilet, they're only going to work so well. Any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and stay tuned for more videos on brain health and health optimization.